I'm joined now by Iran foreign affairs analyst Kaveh Afrasiabi. He's the co-author of Iran Nuclear Accord and the Remaking of the Middle East. So Kaveh, I'd like to begin by getting your reaction to President uh, Trump waiving economic sanctions on Iran once again, but saying this, in fact, is the final time. Well, Asi, I really think this is a case uh, where the bottle is half full rather than half empty. And I'm glad that in the final analysis, President Trump has listened to the sound advice of his top advisors, as well as the various European leaders who have been lobbying Washington to stick with the deal instead of scrapping it. And uh, if you recall, back in early October, President Trump issued a similar vacuous ultimatum and giving deadlines to Congress to fix it or nix it. And the Congress, just as I uh, expected and heard in interview with you back then, did absolutely nothing. And they will likely not do anything in the future either. And the European leaders, as we heard from them, in unison just a couple of days ago in Brussels, are in unison solidly backing the nuclear deal and thinking that this is the best uh, available deal and the U.S. should go along with it instead of all these self-traumatizing, so, really let, unnecessary headaches. So let me ask you about the actual core and the substance of this agreement. If the United States pulls out, is this agreement essentially dead? Well, uh, we have heard various statements from Tehran that, uh, you know, the various contingencies in place and scenarios with respect to whether or not the Trump administration will impose some of the lifted sanctions, will scrap the deal altogether, and so on and so forth. So based on, you know, the White House's reaction, Iran plans to have proportionate response, and we have heard escalating rhetoric from the head of Iran's atomic agency that Iran will likely reduce its cooperation with the atomic agency if Trump decides to go against the nuclear deal, which fortunately did not happen today. So I think that for now we're safe, and we'll see what happens with, within the course of the next three months or so if there is any direct negotiation between U.S. and Iran, which should happen within the multilateral framework of 5 plus 1. Will uh, Iran and the EU try to renegotiate some aspects of this agreement with the United States? Is that a likely scenario? I highly doubt that, and I think that uh, President Trump uh, is basically alone on this. We heard some, uh, you know, very feeble gestures by the French President Macron early on, but he has not repeated himself, and the Europeans and the European Union they're pretty convinced that, you know, the non-nuclear issues such as Iran's conventional ballistic missile should remain outside the framework of the nuclear negotiations. And if you include the non-nuclear issues, it really complicates the matter. It drags in the role of other regional parties who also have ballistic missiles such as Saudi Arabia and Israel. And this really creates a chaos and will not lead to any fruitful negotiation, in my opinion. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Kaveh Afrasiabi, thank you so much.